What do Battlefield 2042 and Battlefield 1 have in common? Well, it's certainly not the map design, it's certainly not the gunplay, and it is absolutely not the movement. So, what is it? Well, the same things that made Battlefield 1 worse than it could have been are making Battlefield 2042 worse than it could be. And it boils down to cheesy design decisions and the gameplay not really having that much depth. Now, don't get me wrong, Battlefield 1 is definitely a better game than Battlefield 2042. But Battlefield 1 was definitely not as good as it could have been due to, basically, just poor thinking and implementation of mechanics. For instance, the second slide nerf in Battlefield 1 completely removed any sort of depth to close quarters gameplay other than holding an angle and staring at it, waiting for someone to come around the corner. When you remove that sort of depth and something to learn from your game, the, your game loses a lot. And it ends up being really shallow and not having a lot to grind to get better at or look forward to actually using. And overall, Battlefield 1 suffers from what I like to call over-casual design. It overly caters to a specific group of players while sacrificing a lot of the gameplay's depth and even balance. And I'll give you a good comparison to how Battlefield 1's over-casual design has trickled down into Battlefield 5 and Battlefield 2042 and has continued to hurt the franchise for the past few releases. For, for an example, if you look at a game like Battlefield 4, you can't just jump in a vehicle in Battlefield 4 and expect to destroy an entire lobby with it. You have to practice. There are very difficult mechanics to master. For instance, in Jets, there's an entire community dedicated to dogfighting in Battlefield 4 because it was just that difficult. There were a lot of nuances to it. There was using ECM to take yourself off the radar. There were different types of turns, like cuts and switches and looping, which you had to do at a very specific speed to get the tightest turning angle. And of course, this took hundreds upon hundreds of hours to master at a very, very high level, and there were other communities dedicated to pretty much every single vehicle in Battlefield 4 because the mechanics allowed players that were bad and players that were good to have fun, and they, it offered them something to do. It offered everyone something to do. Now, fast forward to Battlefield 1, where essentially the vehicles are shells of them for themselves with very, very little mechanics. This then trickles down into Battlefield 2042, and I think we can all agree that Battlefield 2042's vehicles might even be easier to use than Battlefield 1's. There's really nothing to learn in them. Anyone can jump in a vehicle and pretty much dominate within a few hours, and this is due to there just being a lack of mechanics that you have to learn, a lack of a skill ceiling, and it definitely hurts the game. Because as you saw with the Superhind, all we had to do was just boot that up one, one day, and we were terrorizing servers. Same with the Stealth Helicopter. I don't really fly that much in Battlefield. I'm destroying people with the Stealth Helicopter right now. Within hours, within five or six hours, I would say that I'm pretty much the same skill level as some of the best pilots in the world. And I can absolutely tell you that there will not be communities that live on to this day surrounding Battlefield 2042's vehicles, like there are in Battlefield 4. So the reason Battlefield 1 is so important here is I think people gloss over the fact that Battlefield 1 really did some irreparable damage to the Battlefield franchise with the mechanics and gameplay decisions that they implemented. Because take the slide nerf, for instance, in Battlefield 1. If you played Battlefield 1 during release, you know that there was a slide in the game that was essentially your only form of close quarters movement outplay. Obviously, some people are going to say in the comments, Oh, it's World War 1! It doesn't fit the game! It doesn't matter. It's a video game. You need to get real. The slide was absolutely necessary for the game's gameplay because it was the only option people had to separate themselves in close quarters gunfights. Now, when the developers decided to nerf it a second time, which essentially rendered it useless, that right there signifies that they don't understand why it's important to the game's gameplay. And right then and there, in my opinion, that's when Battlefield started going downhill. As soon as the developers don't understand why something they put in the game is important to the game's gameplay, you pretty much can just write off the whole game as doomed. 
And you can absolutely see this sort of decision making that hurts the game trickle down into Battlefield 2042 with the way that Battlefield 2042's movement is and the vehicle design and really the gunplay. There really isn't many mechanics to actually master in Battlefield 2042 at all. And the developers, I'm pretty sure, just don't understand why there should be, especially whoever designed the vehicles. And you might be asking, like, okay, well, why does this matter? Well, again, looking back at Battlefield 4, the reason that game has stayed alive and relevant for so long is because there's depth to the gameplay. It's enjoyable. People enjoy playing the game. There's a lot of stuff to learn. And it's fun to actually learn it and use it in-game and get better at it. And you cannot say the same thing for Battlefield 1, Battlefield 5, or even Battlefield 2042. And this sort of trend has to stop in the next Battlefield game if they want it to be successful. And overall, it really is just down to the competence of the game designers. Do they understand why the other Battlefield games that were produced were successful, why people enjoyed them, why people continue to say they're the best ever today, and why they should actually continue to copy some of the things that they did in the past and put them in the new Battlefield games. And before anyone comments down below, oh, Battlefield 1, like, re sold really, really well. Yeah, I mean, it oh sold really well during one of the worst Call of Duty God. releases ever. And don't let it fool you. Battlefield 1's player counts absolutely plummeted after release. Not many people talk about that. That game didn't have a big player base for a very, very long time. At pretty much every Battlefield that releases dies off really, really fast, and people just sort of ignore it for some reason, and act like just because their game sold well, it doesn't mean that their players absolutely plummeted off the face of a cliff very shortly after release, never to recover, as shown by this population graph. And it's really unfortunate because I really do think that if they made the correct decisions with Battlefield 1 and didn't nerf the slide super hard and removed suppression, you know, didn't put sweet spots in the game, basically de-cheesed the game, nerfed explosives, took gas grenades out of the game, took unblockable melee animations out of the game, took the cavalry out of the game, took cheesy bayonet charges out of the game, I really do think that game would be the absolute best Battlefield ever released by far because it's the maps are great, I think... What people say about the atmosphere is correct. Not that I personally care about the atmosphere that much. I think what they did with the weapon balance was really, really good. I think you can really use whatever weapon you really want in Battlefield 1 and have it feel pretty okay. And that was really good. It's just they made some mistakes. And in my opinion, people overrate the game a little bit. And they don't really look at the real problems present in the game. Now, with Battlefield 2042, I do think, at a baseline, the gunplay is fine, the movement is better than Battlefield 1, so I would say that I can live with that, it's fine. It's just, the rest of the game is such, in such a worse state than Battlefield 1, that I don't think it even has a chance to recover at all. Especially not with the developer team left working on the game, I definitely would be more confident in the developer team left working on Battlefield 1 during that game's life cycle. So, basically, to round out the video, what does Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 2042 have in common with each other? Essentially, uh, poor gameplay decisions, and overall just really, really cheesy, without really any depth to the gameplay. And that is a recipe for disaster that I hope will not continue, but I fear that it might. So, if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button. I know I'm probably going to make some people mad with this video, but I really want you guys to think about what I'm saying. Because I played Battlefield 1 at a very, very high level, just like I play every other Battlefield game at a very, very high level. And I really do think that when you know how Battlefield 1 functions at that high level, you can see clearly as to how shallow that game really is and how much better it really, really could be. And actually was before, before they made mistakes. And now we're seeing those same mistakes being made with Battlefield 2042. So that's all I really wanted to point out in this video. I appreciate you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Comment down below what do you think. Again, I know I'm going to make people mad with this, but I'm going to say what I said, and uh, that's it. So, I'll see you guys later.